morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Let's see my pop up the chat so I can see you coming on. I don't know about you or where you're at, but oh, it is beautiful here the last, what, two or three days. After those couple cold snaps we had, it's been, what, I think it was 70 one day, it was 65 the next, today's supposed to be 60. So, like, I get it, it's going down, but I'll take it, it's beautiful. Good morning, Jenny, how are you today? As I bundle up, it's not that cold. Good morning, Pennsylvania and Minnesota. Christina and Vivian, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm here. Christina, welcome. You're doing good. Like, I swear, the last month, you've had it. North Carolina. What's up, Randy? Good morning, good morning, Aaron and Heather. How are you guys doing? What are you guys still harvesting? We're going to talk a little bit about season extensions today, and I'm curious what you guys are still harvesting. Southern California. Good morning, Nate. I hope you're well. Today in Maine. 55 in Maine. Yeah, it's going to be, It's. I think it's around 60 today here for us. Um, with a chance of rain. Uh, but it's beautiful. I'll take it. Rain or shine. I'm cool. Lettuce, kale, carrots, parsley and kale. My eyes are totally half open, <laughs> but better than half closed. Mm. <laughs> good morning, good morning. So still growing lettuces and herbs. Her herbs are just going wild. So this, what, this week I've been planning on um, my holiday wreaths that I make and will be selling this year. Um, what I've been just searching the garden to see what I can throw into it and I came up with an idea to do a, like I have so much Dusty Miller I know it's not about vegetable but we'll get to it Dusty Miller it's this beautiful like soft white gray foliage it's beautiful and um, I have so much of that left this season and I have a lot of sage and rosemary still in my herb patch and I'm going to put one together today, and I think it's going to be beautiful and smell delicious. I can't wait. Um, so, <laughs> good morning, Katie. Good morning. <laughs> um, what? You're still harvesting tomatoes? Where are you? Pull sweet potatoes. First, you're trying a small garden. Just pull your sweet potatoes before your first hard frost. They can handle a little bit. Um, but you don't necessarily want the spuds to freeze and they're pretty close to the surface often, at least for me when I grow them. Uh, so they freeze, they have potential of freezing. Now, if you're in a really mild area, a lot of times your ground can act as like a root cellar and like that's something we'll touch on today. Uh, so look into that too. Looking into purchasing small season extenders, yeah. Uh, I still have carrots, parsnips, rutabagas in the ground. Two kale plants are still going strong. Yeah, so we have kale charred under a tunnel, um, parsley, sage, rosemary. Um, ba -da -da. I have mint plants. I have borage still going, barrage, however you say it. Um, I have radishes growing. I don't know if you guys saw it. You may not have, but I'm trying to learn TikTok, but I like it better on Instagram anyway, so I make them into reels. I made a reel about this massive radish that we grew, and it's, it's like 80% of the radishes that are in my garden right now. They are like massive, massive. If you haven't seen it, just, just go look at it because it makes me laugh. Um, I don't know what it is about these fall radishes, but they are blowing away our um, our spring radishes like tenfold. And you know what? I dropped, ra <laughs> okay, 
I got a seed packet mixed up and I swore I planted status, a flower around my um, rhubarb, my giant rhubarb plant. And uh, it ended up being radishes. And um, the size of them, they're just, the stalks on them are like this big. And then the radishes are double. I don't know what's happening. So I think rhubarb has like extra growth hormone or something. I have to look into that. Dusty Miller and Evergreen. Ooh, I'm going to play around with it today. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah, Dahlia tubers. Um, I'm definitely cool to talk both flowers and, and veggies. I mean, we sell a lot of flowers. Uh, yeah, tubers. start. They should be coming out. I still have some to get out and to separate. Uh, if you are separating yours, do it this. It's Okay. It's easier to separate them in the fall, but it's harder to see the eyes, and the eye is what's necessary for a plant to grow from. If you cut a tuber, it doesn't have an eye, you won't get a plant. In the spring, it's harder to cut through them, but it's easier to see the eyes, so it's like, ugh. Um, I try to do it now. Ton of kale, lettuce, carrots, herbs. I took um, the peppers and eggplants inside, and they didn't get, they didn't get the dormancy message. That's good. Um, okay, have any of you, do any of you like cut your pepper plants and just bring them in, flip them upside down with pepper still on them to try to get the last few to mature? Um, I want to try that. I have one I've covered because I just haven't gotten to it and I want to give it a go. I wonder if you could still do that with eggplant. That's interesting. Oh, question above. I'm an eight, nine coastal South. Oh, Wow. That's a tongue twister, Christina. You're in coastal South North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> not sure who, but someone said spinach can tolerate frost. Is there a good temp uh, to grow them in between? Spinach can also, I mean, spinach is just tolerant overall. Spinach, there's certain spinaches out there. I think it's in New Zealand who tolerates heat in the spinach grand scheme of things you know so they can't take the hottest of hot but they can tolerate heat better than most spinaches so spinach is a cool crop morning all my phone hates me today suzanne my phone hates me most days i am so i mean you guys know though i have not messed this show up technologically in months maybe it was kirsten <laughs> Just kidding. Don't tell her I said that. It wasn't cursed and it was always me. But I'm just so not technologically sound. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Can't do it. My phone hates me. I have a fan, you know, fancy iPhone like most people. And uh, I text and call and I can go on my social media. And that's about all I do on this thing. It's just above me. And I'm fine with that. Overwinter jalapenos, trying it anyway. So did you bring in your jalapeno plant? Curious. Creatively Candace, welcome. You're not late. You're just on time. Um, deep dive study for the winter. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sorry, late today. Don't be sorry. Um, hello, all my deep dive study for the winter is doing a spring garden the right way. Thank you for touching back on that. I was going to ask you guys about your homework. What was your, what have you decided your winter deep dive is going to be on? I want that to drop in too. Uh, so we can touch back on that. Mr. Edwards is doing um, a spring garden the right way. I think that's great. So, I mean, I'm guessing you're diving into time, how to, you know, amend your soil right away things that you can start early, things that you can direct sow. Yeah, there's lots involved. So I think that's incredible. Nice work. How early can you start hot pepper seedlings inside? You can start them as early as you have space. If you are interested in potting your peppers up to, you know, gallon size buckets, start them tomorrow. Just kidding. Don't do that. Uh, I mean, there are people who grow them inside under grow lights. So in reality, you can start them very early. It's just about space. 
Don't curse the show today. Well, it's already going, Christina. I don't think I can mess it up, at least while it's streaming. And also, I probably just ruined it for myself there, too. Today, Alex, we are going to be talking about season extensions. Are any of you currently using season extensions? And now these can be um, if you just use like a basic frost cloth, if you use um, more of a low tunnel structure, if you uh, are sometimes like me and go toss a blanket out on something. I do it. <laughs> if I haven't planned well, I mean, it happens. My grandma probably doesn't appreciate all my afghans laying across. It's like lawn ornaments. It's wonderful. Um, greenhouses, cold frames. And this can be something you've built or just a throw together for the time being. Um, so I'm curious what you guys are using. Bok choy, kale, uh, rapini, cabbage, one potted. I don't think I can. Okay, that's going to probably sound. I don't know how to pronounce that pepper. Gahilo? Gahilo? Pepper? Gahilo? Two L's? I don't know with green fruits and frosted leaves. Um, I don't know if you heard me say you could bring your pepper plant in and hang it upside down, full and intact, and usually there's enough, depending on the stage of ripeness, um, in your pepper plant to mature those peppers or pot it up and bring it inside and put it under grow lights. I run all season garden. I pick strongest plants from outside, move them indoors under lights, keeping a year round harvest. Roger, that sounds really cool. So like how many plants are you bringing in? That's, that's another great um, season extension. If you have the ability in the room to bring plants indoor and to use them that way, uh, to continue harvesting off them that way, then I'm jealous. I don't have the room, the space, any of the above to be able to do that. Now, you don't have to take the whole plant either. You could take a cutting off and root it and just start with a smaller plant. By the time it gets all big and bushy, you're ready to put it back outside again. Um, but that is, that's very cool. Oh, creatively, Candace. You're really making me jealous. Okay, Hubby gave me the green light to order the supplies for a 20-foot hoop house for my cut flower farm to be able to start ranunculus and enemies in early winter. Uh, zone 6, our springs are too short. Mine too. I'm in 5B, as you know, and uh, I'm building one. I don't know out of what, but I'm ready to get scrappy because my ranunculus and anemone need to start. Though... I started some of my anemone in the, I'm going to, I haven't put them in the ground, let's be real. Um, I have to soak them today and I'm putting some in the ground. I'm putting about 50 in the ground just to see how they do. Because I'm at like the cutoff of being able to start them in the fall. Okay, um, clear tubs over my plants to extend like Lude, Lude, Luke showed before. Yes, that is a great way to create the greenhouse effect if you just have clear totes around um say you you know got all your christmas decor up now you have just empty clear totes take them out to the, the garden and flip them over you're gonna want something on top of them to hold them down so they're not blown around in the wind that's a great option um one that we like is i can do hay bales and windows and that's just because i have access to windows i know i brought it up recently so i just do hay bales either one tall or two tall hair straw and i lay windows on them so i put these bales around the beds um put the window on top so i basically built myself a greenhouse uh, i like to vent them on warm days that works really well i need to do a video on this because i have a lettuce bed that i'd like to keep longer so maybe that will be my assignment in the next couple days because i have to mock up some wreaths first okay um different mulch types out of ordinary pet bedding shredded paper planting awesome suzanne you have what seems like a nice long fall to-do list like the rest of us 
Um, okay, what else are we doing? I gotta scroll down. Two sheets and a cold frame. Nice, that works. What are you trying? Is there anything in your garden that you're trying to uh, extend further than you even think it could? Like, is anyone trying anything risky, you know? I'm just curious. Has, oh, you guys, I love the camaraderie in here about Candace's greenhouse. <laughs> Everyone's so excited. Tried uh, a grow light that charges a battery from solar panels. Is it adequate? Great question. I have not. Um, uh, yeah, I haven't heard anything on that. Has anyone found grow lights that are solar powered? Sorry, guys, my nose tickles today. Um, I am in zone 5B. I'm in southeast Michigan. We have short springs, um, really weird, either very, very hot and dry summers or very, very wet summers. Um, and our frost was actually pushed back two weeks, two weeks this year. It's funny because I don't know if you saw Luke had posted yesterday, the day before, this morning, sometime soon came across my feed and he's like you know how it's funny we get you know one or two nights at 32 degrees that killing frost and then we have two weeks of just gorgeous gorgeous gardening weather and we're like why <laughs> why does this happen <laughs> but I mean we were pushed back two weeks and now like I said we've had almost 10 days of just beautiful weather oh my cosmos are dead as a door now they are not blooming I'm glad you're sour Tomato plants on the windowsill, absolutely. Make sure if you are bringing plants in for your season extension, rotation is gonna be your friend. They're getting that light from the outside source. Make sure you're spinning them around every so often so that way uh, your plants aren't hanging over. Mm -hmm -hmm. Our Cosmos supposed to be five feet tall. Um, I did not like baby my cosmos at all and i mean they were like chest high on me i'm five foot six so i could definitely see him getting five foot tall northern survival don't be sorry i'm glad you're here my thanksgiving cactus from last year is setting flower buds randy show me the pictures show them to me um good yes good for the the light but let's see who knows anything about it they can be there are some different varieties so i've been looking into frost cloth um this this fall i am okay back up a hair for those of you who don't know started a farm technically two years ago but really really got it going last year with my brother um and we put maybe 40 percent of our infrastructure in last year uh, this year i'm trying to wrap up the infrastructure as well as get myself a couple different tools basically so um and by tools i mean like frost cloth shade cloth um like i have a pipe bender for making hoops on my my list to get this year um, a backpack sprayer remember we farmed two acres so i cannot pump those things and spray my hand all day so backpack sprayer it is um and i've been looking into frost cloth a lot and what they say is as well as, as long as they're well treated they can last you up to four or five years and i don't necessarily think that was something i realized when i first got into gardening that yes there is a little bit of a i mean they're little or small whatever it is to you i get i don't have any right to judge what you think a monetary value is um so there is an investment to getting a frost cloth but it's an investment into the four or five years so even if you have a smaller garden you can get say like a 10 foot by so much of a frost cloth and be able to cover your whole garden if you wanted you know early spring to get things started earlier to use in the fall um and that can be those ones can be draped right across you could do hoops of some sort um i've 
done hoops with hula hoops from the dollar store. So a dollar a piece for a hoop, all you do is disconnect the two ends and just bend it over, plant it in the ground. In that way, when I put my blankets is what it was before, I haven't really had too much frost cloth up until soon. Um, it's not compressing all your plants, so it's not quite so heavy. You just, you just really gotta get creative and it's definitely worth it. Oh, thank you, North Star, for plugging that in. Would you recommend mulching onions and garlic for overwintering? Yes. Swiss Garden. Don't know where you are. Again, 5B. I, I like to let mine grow a little bit. I like to see them sprout before I mulch them. Uh, this worked out really well as an experiment on accident because Jake, Farmer Jake, my brother, planted one row of our garlic, as in like one whole bed. And... Um, he immediately put straw over it. And when I went through, I planted a bed and I did not put the straw right over it. And they are at very similar, if not my bed might be a hair further along. And I don't, it's not, I didn't plant so early that they're obnoxiously tall. You, It's good for them to grow a little bit before, you know, the frost really comes. So I like them to sprout and then I like to put down my mulch. So today when I go back, I have one bed that can be mulched. I have one bed I'm still waiting for that just finished up getting planted. All the garlic's in the ground, guys, all of it. So much of it, like a hundred, no, maybe not a hundred, maybe 65, 85 heads. So how many clothes? A lot of garlic. Um, T5, T4, T8, T2, all the light you really need to do indoor crops besides when you switch light cycles to bloom, then best to use. Do not use much electric. Anyone who has light questions, please go see Roger because Roger, you are looking way more um, informed on lights than I am. When I use grow lights, it's really just to get my season started. So... I haven't, I haven't done grow lights to, um, you know, to, through different time frames, you know, because you can use grow lights for foliage growth, and then you can change up the spectrum. Is it to um, for more blooming? I know Kirsten talked about that a little bit because she would bloom some of her indoor plants, um, but I don't know. It just isn't something that I have direct. Contact, not contact. You know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. You know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Tampa, Florida. So, um, let. Okay. Another. So, Candace was talking. Sorry, we're here. Candace was talking about how she's getting that twenty foot foot hoop house, right? Well, I went digging through my grandpa's barn. I don't know if you guys have a grandpa like me, but he is the collector of all things. Very organized, but just the collector of all things. And um, I found a this framing of a portable uh, garage. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Usually, it, you know, I don't know, it looks like a garage and it has a plastic tarp over it, but we don't have a plastic tarp, which is fine. So I found the frame of that. So that those are things that I'm always looking for on Marketplace and here it's been in my grandpa's garage for or my grandpa's barn for I don't know how many years that's that's something that you guys could be looking on um Facebook Marketplace eBay or yeah whatever you look Craigslist whatever you look on those could be converted into greenhouses you know we don't have to go buy these kits uh, as great and as much easier as they seem if you really want a greenhouse, I mean, you do, you got to get scrappy. Like, you get it? Scrapping? Because it's metal? No? Okay. Dad jokes are gone. <laughs> yes, Northern Survival. Yes, a carport. Thank you, North Star. You always keep me in line. Carport. Um, those, yeah, carport frames. You, I told you you knew what I was talking about. Those are great things that you can convert into greenhouses. So I plan on, I got to order some plastic now um, 
to be able to go over that. I'll build a door. You know, I'll wrap it so where I can build, you know, just a basic door frame with the door on it so I can walk in and out of them. Um, and that, that's on my f f maybe winter to-do list. That might not be fall. I have so much to do on my fall to-do list. And winter's coming fast. But you can find them on Marketplace. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to find it much cheaper than you could get a greenhouse. We have made some wire tunnels for our chickens to run through and now I'm using them over beds with frost cover. Norma, genius, genius, genius. I know a lot of people use um, chicken wire tunnels for chickens to go through their garden. That way they're saving their plants, but, uh, but also getting the benefit of your chickens eating bugs that are around. So that is phenomenal. So did you, you just picked them up, put them over a bed and put your frost cloth over them? Cause you're a genius. Just, I just want you to know that. Campground turns and burns through them. Pop-up sheds, oh. Check your local campgrounds and permanent sites. This is a tip that I got this past year to check campgrounds for miscellaneous things, structures typically. And um, like I've been, I call around to campgrounds every couple months and see if anyone's getting rid of a cabin because they will just burn them often. Um, and I want a cabin to put on a piece of property. So that's a great idea to look for sheds there too, to convert. Is anyone new to season extension this year? Like, are you guys just getting, like, are you new? Are you doing anything that you haven't done before as a season extension? You're welcome, Norma. You can use cattle panels and PVC as well for a greenhouse. Um, okay, so where does it, I'm look. I'm like seeing the structure in my head. So I can take a cattle panel and I bend it over. Where's the PVC go? I know you can do it with wood to like support your bases, but that's really interesting. Cattle panels are another great option, especially for seed starting. I know we're hopping to the other end of the spectrum, but most often, if you're not farming two acres, you know, like I am, you don't need that much. Um, Yes, Chris, I forgot about that. We'll come back to that. You don't need that much room in a greenhouse environment. Even if you could get two cattle panels, typically here they range, I'll go on the high end, $22 a panel. So $45 for your two panels. And, um, and then just to get the plastic to go over it, you can then create yourself a small or as large of a greenhouse as you would like using cattle panels. Um, with just the addition of extra panels and a bigger piece of plastic. That is a great idea too. So Chris says, is that all it takes? I remember you bringing this up this time of year last year, Chris. He breaks out the Christmas lights for citrus frost protection. So do you... <laughs> Does it double as, as Christmas decor? Do you just wrap all your trees in Christmas lights? I think it's genius. <laughs> it's usually sufficient. That's so good. When it's uh, real cold, you, he tosses sheets over them to help hold in that heat. Honestly, so good. So good. I would like some of you to try this this year. I don't have a citrus tree. Um, I could probably, I mean, why couldn't you do that for a, a row of vegetables too? You know, just decorate your, whatever it is. There's, oh, Chris, I think, I think you're onto something. You should be able to wrap your pepper plants in lights. <laughs> that might be a bit of a stretch, but if you're in a mild enough area that just barely hits frost, a killing frost, maybe it could protect them long enough. You set up a winter garden on your deck. That's awesome. Clear plastic containers, six mil plastic for the serious winter months. Connecticut 6A. Great idea. 
do um okay 6a clear the only question not question but i'm wondering if maybe if it the winter comes hard enough for a time period you might want to use some extra insulation meaning uh you could put straw around them you can use like the insulation foam boards if that was something you wanted to pay money for um, i'm definitely all for finding things that i can utilize without having to pay for bend to a hoop oh okay so the pvc you're using as the structure you're getting a thin enough pvc that you, you're able to bend it okay that makes sense you can do pvc for your low tunnels i i don't know why that didn't click with me for a greenhouse you can definitely do it for low tunnels um chris says that the christmas lights work for peppers mm, i wish i thought of that two weeks ago chris I wish put it write it down somewhere so I forget again next year um, but yeah the PVC for the low tunnels is definitely an option uh, you can also you use some sort of stake whatever you can come up with to uh, put the PVC on otherwise the PVC does have to be sunk into the ground like what two feet do you <laughs> We need Christmas lights that are grow lights. I think a uh, boundless game, you need to patent that. Patent that, just go for it. <laughs> so they need to be weatherproof, right? Because we're gonna have them outside just like most Christmas lights are. And they need to be full spectrum, heck yeah. Okay, so for the one who's doing the garden on their deck, the foil faced insulating foam boards work great when you set it facing the sun and reflecting the heat and light back into the plants. That's awesome. Huh. Yeah, high tunnels as well. Northern survival if you're talking about the PVC. What about bubble wrap around the containers? Last year I used leaves as added insulation. Um, I don't know if bubble wrap would be enough. I'm not, that one I wouldn't know. I don't know if I would trust it to be enough, so try it and let me know. Yes, I do know people who put like Christmas lights through their greenhouse to decorate, but whether they know they get the double benefit, benefit of it, I don't know, but genius. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, you finally made it to a live. Dusty and Chelsea, welcome. You know what? For you, Dusty and Chelsea, I will go a little longer. What's the running question right now? Dusty, we're, or Chelsea, tell me who's here. We are talking about season extension, what you guys are currently using, uh, what, if you have something that's in the ground right now that you need some advice on being able to extend it a little longer. We've talked about um, pulling out pepper plants and moving them. Oh, hey, Chelsea. <laughs> moving them inside as a type of season extension. We've talked about clipping plants and rerooting them to come inside. Like this, this was a good thing, I personally think, for your herbs. I, I don't know about you, but my sage plants are, I don't know, this big, rosemary, even bigger. And they're on the small side, I know. But so I can't bring that whole plant inside. Don't have the room for it. But I can take uh, a cutting and do uh, like for the rosemary. I can either take a soft portion of it that isn't super woody and do a soft, uh, soft rooting cutting, or I can get a woodier section and just root it like a hardwood cutting. Um, and I I would probably use. Like for rosemary, if I did hardwood, I would use a rooting hormone for that. But like your sage, you can do it. There's different things that you could take cuttings from and root them up for an indoor or garden, you know, on your kitchen table or something. Hi there, from South Africa. Our growing season just started. <gasps> I'm jealous. I look forward to winter because I don't know about you, but we all need a reset. And this is also my 
like mega brainstorming time of ways that I can get the garden to work for me and I can get my garden, the thing that I love to do so much, to make me money. Because, because I love it so much, I need money. <laughs> um, and so I do love the winter, but I, I'm so excited for you, KT, for getting going. And what are you starting? Do you have plants out yet? Um, or are you just starting plants? Let me know where you are at, I'm curious. The garden at rest allows me to rest. Yes, North Star. And we need it. I, it's it's something that we need. We need to rest and recoup, not only to collect ourselves, to collect our thoughts, to start fresh the next season. And I know there's people who grow year round and I think that's wonderful. But um, I definitely think a rest time is great too. Ooh, it does not help when a message comes up and blocks my chat. I can't see you guys. I have volunteer fall spinach, lettuce, radish, growing through a patch of two beds in the path between. Should I bring them inside under grow lights or try to rig something over them? Chelsea, where are you located? Because um, uh, then I can better answer what I would do. They sell products for the purpose. Oh, okay. Stick a bunch of... Okay, look at this scrappy thing. I've heard of something like this, but I wasn't thinking about it. Chris has all the answers. You can stick a bunch of two liter soda bottles filled with water in a ring around your plants. I'm guessing this is when we were talking about the bubble wrap. She was wondering if she could use bubble wrap around her, her plants to be enough insulation. The air in it would it make me think but water water has an incredible capacity of holding heat holding its temperature so that like if you have animals or livestock using a gallon a gallon jug of half filled with water a pinch of salt which helps it to not freeze um and you can put it in your water troughs and it eliminates like the breakup so it helps hold its temperature, so absolutely I could see you being able to put a ring of two liter bottles or water bottles or, you know, like milk or water jugs around. I don't see why that couldn't work. And build yourself a water insulation around them. So good. What a great idea. Northwest Ohio. Okay, so you're close to us, Chelsea. I would, spinach will tolerate some frost. That'll do pretty good. Um, I would do maybe if you have straw or hay bales around, I talked about um, like a cold, a mock-up cold frame that I like to use is I put straw, hay bales, one high for this, I would do one high. And if you have old windows, that's a great one to just lay across the bales. If you can just get some sort of plastic to go across them, that'll work. Um, overnight, if you just want a sheet or a blanket to go across them, uh, that would that would work. If you basically try anything, it's better than it being out out in the elements, right? So, I would definitely figure that out. Update on the garden planner. I'm so glad you asked. I believe it's coming out like quarter one. Quarter one, I think, is when that is happening. We as you guys know like we are pedal to the metal on packing all of the seeds we're way ahead schedule which is great um our team i i say like them because i'm here once a week and i'm only able to pack for like four hours they are just non-stop packing and just the most wonderful team of hard workers and they are getting it done for you guys so get on social somehow and give a shout out to that my team because they are just blowing it away. So we're way above schedule on that and um, we're hoping, I, th I think we're hoping to launch like end of November is the goal, so that would be incredible. And, um, and then the planner will come out next, Q1 of next year. It'll be exciting. I have an in-ground worm bin. Just leave it or bring it indoors. I did buy worms. Should I keep feeding them or is it a waste of time? 
Because you have it in ground, I would think that you could leave it. I'm newer to worm bins. I've been doing a lot of setting on them lately, but I'm newer to them. Um, someone I know who does run in ground worm bins is, uh, they're called Farm to Fa Family Almont. A L M O N T. Farm to Family Almont. Uh, find them on Instagram and ask them. Amy is phenomenal. She runs her Instagram page and she would be so happy to enlighten you on that. From my educated guess, I would think you could leave them because your ground will act as an insulation. And um, yeah, your worms will burrow down further into it to stay warm because the lower they go, the warmer they'll be. Depending on how deep it is, as long as if they can get under the frost line, which is what 30, is it 36 inches? It's a frost line, I think, here ish. Uh, if they can get under that, that would be a great idea to think of if you're building worm bins to make it so they can get under the frost line. Um, I would think you can leave them and feeding them, I don't think would be a bad thing. So please correct me if I'm wrong and definitely go find. Farmed Family Almont, A-L-M-O-N-T, and ask Amy because she will have an answer for you like that. Very quick. Ah, Lila. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Thank you. That was so sweet. It is. So this is a perfect time for feedback. Let's feedback and then we'll, um, we will do, uh, we'll close it up here shortly. Um, Worms do a deep dive if it gets cold in Florida. Cool, Shirley. So yeah, same concept. I definitely think that would do it. A holiday visit. I do think so. Are you guys still benefiting? I, th I hope so. Are you guys still benefiting from this live stream even though it's just me? I know it's more of a chat base currently. It's not so um, morning show like Luke likes to call it. And don't get me wrong, I loved that aspect. I think Kirsten and I bantered really, really, really well, and I learned a ton from her. I know she learned a ton from me, and it was cool to like see her come up with the concepts that I talked about in the beginning of us doing this, all the way until, uh, you know, to the end before she left, how she'd bring those up. So I really do hope that you guys are still getting benefit from this, even just like the community. I think is pretty cool. Uh, I will be having people on holidays are wild <laughs> and just getting seeds packed. It's wild. Everything's wild. But I want to have Luke on here. Um, I think he wanted to come on for uh, our 50th episode, which is coming up, guys. I think we're at 46 today. And uh, so in a month, we'll have the 50th episode. And I think that's pretty cool. We've been going for over a year. There's just been a couple that we had to miss for whatever reasons. Um, so it's coming around. I do last week. Oh, you know, here, let me catch up on this. Well, good. Okay. It's looking like an all around yes, we are getting benefit out of this, and it's still a good thing to have. So thank you. I really appreciate it, guys. That's really awesome. Um, so yeah, I really, really appreciate it. Ooh, I'm seeing names that I don't normally see come through. Is it Felina? Thank you. I'm glad you just started watching and you're enjoying it. A new and benefit. Hosier, thank you. Wonderful. I do miss Kirsten actually daily. So you're not alone. Um, yeah, I do think it kind of makes it personal. You know, Luke and I have this talk and he's like, oh, it's not learning show anymore because you don't have a co-host. And I'm like, yeah, but I feel like you guys are my co-host, right? Because we're learning off each other the whole time. Um, I think we have great conversations that go through here. You guys bring up points that I I don't have that I'm learning from. I just, I think it's great. So very cool. Glad we're loving it. I mostly just lurk. Dakota, thanks for chiming in. You can keep lurking. That's cool. <laughs> uh, good. Ah, okay. All of you friends who are just coming in just to tell me how wonderful I am. Thank you. I appreciate you. But also, join in the convo. Some of these names are new to me, and I would really love to learn from you guys too. So please join in when you can. Dakota, Space Junk, Vicwick, um, you're a newer name, so I'm glad you're here. Oh, wonderful. It's, ooh. <sighs> I'm.
I'm going to have to look up the pronunciation of that pioneer because I won't say it again. Hoosier? Is Hoosier like an Indiana resident? Is that right? Because that's what's coming to head. <laughs> to my mind. Um, ha! Lila. Good. I'm glad I pronounced that right. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I would love to see an episode on historical gardening, either summer or indoors during winter. Okay. I'm here for that. I'm going to write it down, but I'm here for it. We're going to write it on the back of this Paul Robeson seed packet. Historical gardening. I'm so glad you said that because I would love to deep dive into that. That sounds so cool. Okay, I think I caught all y'all. When you say you're going to go look up something, do you post those answers in the chat later or in the comments of the video? I never really see the revisit. I'll definitely get more on top of that again, Shandies. Um, typically, it's when I like write... So, for instance, like last week, how I asked for a ton of input on what videos and whatnot you want to see, that one was mainly for Luke. Um, so that way he can be bringing content to you on his, you know, couple weekly videos that he does that you guys want to hear. When I do it like this, I do my best. I have a journal. It's just too far away and I can't reach it for the show where I try to write them down and bring them back the next, the next week. Um, so that is how I try to do it, but I will historical gardening. I will try to do a whole dive on that and see if we can do a whole episode just talking about things in the past and how things have evolved i think that'd be pretty cool um i want to bring up the seed swap that we talked about last week i'm here for it i think it's going to be awesome so what i want us to do i'm trying to think of the best way to do it the sign up is going to be through instagram if you don't have an instagram Send it over in an email at gardenhelp at migardener.com. Um, otherwise, I think we're going to do it through Instagram if you're able. But I will not disclude anyone who can't, uh, who doesn't have um, Instagram. That's cool because I'm not tech savvy. I don't expect everyone to be even to my level. Um, They're talking about a really exciting bug back there. Oh, okay. Ooh, glad I wasn't there. Okay, so I let's post something today. I'm gonna post something today first, and um, so please look out. It'll be this afternoon. I have a doctor's appointment I have to get to, so it'll be this afternoon. I will post on there on the Root Shoots and Coffee Instagram page. It's all spelled out. Um, I want to see interest first in the seed swap. I know we've talked about it here. I want to do that. What I think we're gonna do is for this one, I'm, okay, you know what, here. Well, I was gonna put this poll on Instagram, we're gonna do it here. Do you want it to be where you guys get a name, you then have to contact that, I've done them two different ways. So you get a name, you contact that person, and that will be your seed swap buddy. I'll have someone who you're sending to and someone who is sending to you, so it's like, a sends to B and B sends to C and C sends to A. Does that make sense? Obviously, there's a lot more in the alphabet, but that would make sense. So you're not sending to the same person you're receiving from. I really like that option. Um, so when I have you guys sign up, I'll have you do, yes, like a secret Santa. Perfect. Um, so I'll have you give me your zone too, and I'll do my absolute best to pair you up with someone in the same zone. So that way, um, this is a good way for building community too. Hopefully you guys will find someone who's, you know, pretty awesome and you want to follow them because do it. Um, you know what? That That's what we're going to do for this one. I think it's going to be the best. I thought seed swap was illegal. I really hope not because I've been in a lot of them. <laughs> Um, yeah, it is less work, but just for this first go around and how crazy holidays are, I think it'll be a good choice. Maybe come after launch, 
especially when we get all these cool new fun varieties we can do a different one where you add just a couple seeds of things and we'll figure it out this one that's what we're gonna do i have a suggestion but it's too long to put in here dakota do you have instagram can you message me on instagram with that suggestion um count me in on seed swap beautiful okay head on instagram you can yeah instagram or email i have to keep it in two spots otherwise it's going to get too wild message i'll put the poll out or the interest form out on instagram i want you to message me with your name your zone your name and zone um next week i'll come back with formal rules formal rules on how it's gonna or what can be included um we'll put i don't necessarily like to put like monetary values on things um because i think people are gonna swap what they're able to and i'm so grateful for what they're able to swap personally um i may throw on there that we can't go above a certain number uh just to keep it you know as fair as possible i'm teaching my preschoolers fairness so there's that dakota that's fine can you send it over in an email then uh garden help at migardener.com i'll get on there this afternoon I also dislike tech greatly, <laughs> but it's it's good. Um, seed swap isn't illegal as long as COVID rules and what not are met. I'm going to look into all the rules. That's what I'll do. <laughs> I've been a part of, I don't know, 30 seed swaps. I've never had a problem. And if you are interested, great. I am so happy to have you. If you are not interested, great. I love having you on the stream. That's how it is. Um, okay, cool. Let's do it. Check out Instagram. Please go watch my really funny radish reel because I get a kick out of it every time I watch it. <laughs> it makes me laugh. I hope it makes you laugh too. <laughs> um, awesome, awesome, awesome. So Instagram, you're telling me your name, your zone, and your email. That's also what I need. That's what I was forgetting. Name, zone, email. Tell me on Instagram or gardenhelp at mygardener.com sentiment let's get it going because i would love to have these in the mail maybe within the next two weeks because then hopefully they get there by christmas let's do it uh don't use Haley's ig use am i gardener or don't do am i gardener i won't see those i don't have access to the am i gardener so it has to be at the root shoots and coffee instagram i hope everyone heard that don't use the MI Gardener message for this. Use it for all your other things, but not this. This is just for root shoots and coffee because I'm so happy you're here and I love you all and I can't wait to do this. So, garden help, MIGardener.com, root shoots and coffee, Instagram. Peace. See you guys later. Um, it'll be fun. Have a wonderful week.